Okay, welcome to part two of painting and unpainting self-portrait and then going on top with some oil paint and yeah, just continue with my portrait. So in the video I'll speak a bit about making mistakes from your painting and then going back through and editing them and you'll see the painting is uh, <laughs> Where I did it, it didn't really turn out exactly how I wanted it to be. I was going for more of a renaissance kind of vibe, but I don't know. I think with my work, a lot of the time, well, with work in general, you know, you go in there with an idea of what you want it to be, and sometimes it just comes out completely different. You want realistic, it comes out expressionist, you know, you end up throwing the paint at the palette, at the, at the canvas, and... It's a new day, but let's have a look and see. So being me, I use a dirty palette. Um, I'm very lazy when it comes to cleaning my palettes. Um, that may result in the quality of my artwork, which um, I'm not gonna judge myself on that one. I'm just gonna take it as is, because this is it. So I, I'm moving at the moment, so I just was able to get whatever I could find at that time to use. I started off by mixing my tones using my palette knife and um, my oil paints as well. I just start off with the traditional titanium white and black. Um, and then we've got the burnt umber. I don't, I don't think that's burnt umber, but right now I'm not gonna get the paints out. So I can see there is, I don't know what that is, Ser Ser um, what's her name? What's that lady's name? Serena? Ser oh my gosh, I don't know my colors. But we've got the brownish colour. We've got the umber. I think it's burnt umber. Um, I think there's like a red there as well. I don't know what's possessed me to do this voiceover. I should really try just talking on the camera. Um, yeah, so we've got like a reddish colour. It should be like a pure red. And I've gone through and mixed them up just to create different tones for my skin complexion. I know some people just get their colours from the palette, from the paint pot. And I think... In the future, I will try that because, Lord my God, it takes forever. Like, this colour mixing, my previous teacher, he was like, oh, no, you know, you'll get used to it. Chatella, you'll get used to it. It'll be easy. <laughs> it's not easy. It's always a whole, it's like a whole thing. And I find, like, I waste pain as well. So I try not to put too much out. It's like, this is expensive. Like, people are like, always complain and say why is artwork so expensive the equipment is expensive you want to get proper stuff so i always use proper equipment um, high quality and i've stopped using the water-based oil paints i just want to be traditional babe i know before i was like oh i'm thinking about the environment the environment's so important stuff like that the environment is important but if you want your work to look a certain way and you are you just want it to look a certain way just do use the tools that you want to use it's like when people are like oh let's use um is that toothpaste you can get um i tried it it tastes like it tastes so bad it tastes like cardboard there was this it's like in a bar oh my god i remember actually i took it camping so you it's like a bar it's organic and then you rub it with a toothbrush and then you add water and it tastes like cardboard I would prefer not to have cardboard in my mouth. I want to just have toothpaste. So I'm just taking it as that. I want the toothpaste. So I want the original oil paint. I know I've gone off a bit track, but here we are. So previously you just saw um, the background. So I use oil pastels just to fill in the background. And then this is really jumpy video. I don't know who filmed this, but we'll pray for that person. So. As you can see, I've gone through, added the different tones. So I added all the different tones. And then I, I don't know what possessed me to start adding um, the blush, like added a blush to the work. You can even see there that my paintbrush is looking a bit dry as well. I think you need to just warm up your paintbrush a bit before just jumping into it. And even like her lips are a bit, I don't know. A bit, something a bit strange about this underpainting that I've done and you'll see later on the video where I completely edited it and I want to just remind everyone it's okay to just be like you know what this looks weird I don't know who this person is I'm painting it actually is weird um, 
if you can remember from my previous video, I didn't use any projections. I just went freehand and I just painted it using turpentine. What was it turpentine? I think it was turpentine and or linse, linseed oil. No, it was a solvent to remove the paint and use that to paint and amend my, pit, my the portrait instead of um, projecting it onto the, the canvas or um, using any of the other tools to copy or transfer the image. I just went and was basically working freehand. Um, so that's okay, but sometimes it can get a bit crazy when it comes to then adding the colour. Now I know that my, my um, strength isn't in freehand drawing. I am not the drawing queen, like that's just not me, but I am good at colour. I do enjoy colour. Um, it's not showing off right now, but it, it will come together in the end. So it's quite I ironic that I'm doing these videos of me painting and this is a very long video actually, I think it's like 17 minutes. I remember when I first started doing YouTube many years ago and someone commented saying that my videos are too long, it was five minutes long. But my, me, myself, me, myself and I, that's what I get. Okay, no, not. But as an artist myself, I enjoy watching videos of other people creating. And I actually watched the whole length. Even like those self-help videos or the um, glow up videos. I love, a, a, love me a glow up video. Um, I will listen and watch the whole thing whilst I'm doing something at the same time. Um, it's just nice to have like some sort of background going on. Um, that's why I take my time to just add some music. I'm now using Cap Cut Big Up to Kimmy Sparky. Kimmy, oh my god, she's amazing. She's like, stop and start using Cap Cut. It's just not a promo, but she was just like, just try use that and then you can do your videos. I've been able to do like two videos this week because I was struggling using iMovie. I don't know what's going on with that app, but it just doesn't seem to work or be nice to me at the moment. I don't know if it's the downloading and then uploading and how long the videos are on, but it just crashes my my laptop and I've got a Mac, not a Mac Pro, but a Mac, like a Mac Air or whatever it's called, the, you know, the rose gold one, the fancy one. So I don't know what's going on there. But anyways, let's look back at my portrait. So eyes wise, I mixed the white and the black. So I got like a gray tone to make it kind of like a bluish tone for not the iris with the whites so your your eyes um, and then the pupil I've gone for just a jet black I try to just keep that jet jet black because obviously our pupil are they're black and um, and then I'll add a highlight a bit later on I've tried to do her face kind of like she's got makeup on um, I don't know if it's a pro or a con or what I think social media has confused my head completely of how to paint I, I don't know if anyone else is struggling with the same thing as well on painting and makeup in general, just how people do their makeup, contour, everything. People are like, how do you paint? Um, and I say it's, it's similar to doing your makeup, but there's so many different ways to do your makeup. And yes, there's so many different ways to paint. But oh my gosh, sometimes I just hit myself. I'm just like, ah, it's just so confusing. And then I put my big dry hand in the video. Imagine, that's just amazing. What is wrong with me? <laughs> but yeah, um, before I moved houses, I went and got some new paint brushes. So it's the tiny one. It's like a zero. Um, but even here, you can see the shape of the nose is just completely off. I, I, I'm just amazed at how this this whole portrait comes together at the end. It's it's quite impressive actually. But let me close my mouth for a bit and let you take in. Um. But final tips, well, first and final tips, work with the different tones. Use a massive paintbrush, this small little dinky dinky paintbrush I'm using. Don't follow me, like this is not, this is not it. You need to be using a big paintbrush, getting all your tones in first before starting all this. Like I'm actually doing crosshatch. Why am I doing crosshatch? And why am I starting to do all this other stuff? You can see here that I'm editing the whole thing, but I've now gone and completely changed what was there. Um, 
a very important thing would be also that I always forget to do is to do one section at a time because even here you can see I've sped up, I've speeded up the video but you can see that I'm not washing my paintbrush so you're taking the paint color from one part to another part to another part it's like cross contamination it's like you sneeze and then you're passing okay let me stop <laughs> every time I try and make this life into a chill <laughs> artsy video I start talking about something nasty but try wash your paintbrush wash your paintbrush make sure you clean off any residue of different colors different pigments because then it will transfer remember that your portraits or any picture that you're doing based on the shapes the formal elements of art um, shape tone and then after then start looking into line but the tone and the shape will all come together once once that's in place then you'll start seeing the different lines with the tone and the shape so it's like the, the base for the portrait because we already have the line we started with the line and now we're doing the tone and then the shape it's kind of it's like the design process and i did say i was going to be quiet so let me be quiet enjoy the video for a bit So I think it was around this point where I just thought something wasn't making sense. Um, just around the mouth and the nose, it just wasn't adding up. So what I've done is accept that I've made a bit of a mistake and I'm not going to cry about it. What I did was use a solution and remove that section. And the good thing about having an underpainting in oil paint is that you can see it so you can see what's going on and be like oh actually I've completely come offline I've come the track and I need to just bring that back so I've used a solution and just removed it trying to find out where the lines are I did a yellow undercoats as well um, I wanted it to pop out but I can't really see it in the end I, I, do, I don't I don't know I think I need to make it like really pigmented or just use acrylic paint or something it's weird because I've been painted for so long 
but I, I've just been like, not yardy painting, but just not doing everything exactly how you're meant to do it. And I think that's got me a bit lazy because what I studied, I studied um, mixed media fine arts. We didn't actually have to paint. It was more based on concept. It wasn't based on what you, it wasn't based on like, <clears throat> it wasn't based on creating a piece of artwork that was beautiful or um, that needed to be created in a certain way. So the title of the course was a bit miscon, it was um, a bit mis, misconceiving, is that the right word? Misconceiving. It was a bit of um, a mixture. So it was mixed media. It was more, I would say it was more, um, it was just concept. It was concept of how you can make a piece of work mean anything, how you can make it mean anything or come with a meaning, which in a way is very, is helpful, a great way to sell your artwork. However, if you want to improve on your skills, you have to go behind in your own time and just work on it yourself. So myself, I have invested a lot of money into private courses and and worked in my style myself at home and just in my spare time and always continue to develop my my own my own style and my own academia academia so just for peace sake i'm to say this is the final for now i did end up turning the canvas upside down to help me continue painting it got a bit tricky honestly painting portraits is no easy job it's not an easy job i went for block colors like very thick paints by the end of it i just wanted the shapes to be very clear here's a picture of me here's the underpainting and yeah thank you so much for watching i know it's a really long video compared to what i usually do if you want me to do some more videos well i'm just gonna do them anyways actually decided i'm just gonna keep going um so just subscribe if you want to continue watching and learning whilst i continue to create pieces of work um, I might put up some videos of my previous works as well because I've got a lot of random videos on my hard drive that I haven't edited or put up. Um, yeah, thank you. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you on the other side, I guess.